Greetings, fellow interlopers, it's Taylor. It was about April of last year, and I had just finished a video I was hoping would clear up much of the confusion about the spawn pools that multi-tools were swimming in. I'd like to think if I made a well-explained video, I would have very few questions. That's the goal, at least, right? And yeah, there were a lot of compliments on the video, but there were also quite a few questions as well. If I find a multi that I love, so at when the I'm station, looking in a planet's loot but I don't pool, like the class, you I just said drop that I reload and change the multi. So you so have to do a new save my settlement. Okay, okay, okay. So nearly a year and a half later, I'd like to take another stab and lay out how spawn pools work, as well as how to manipulate these pools to up your chances of snagging an awesome multi-tool. And after we're done with the tutorial, I'm going to take some of the real questions that came out of my first video just to see if this video helps clear those up. So before we get too deep, the first question you might be asking is, what's the goal here? What are we trying to accomplish exactly? Well, at a very high level, I'm trying to find a cool alien or an experimental multi-tool. For the newer player, these are the special ones that look way different than any plain old gray system tool. Not only that, the goal is to find the S-Class model of said tool. If you see a cool tool and you're happy with it being any class, well, you'll save yourself a lot of time for sure. But a lot of fun for me is finding that S-Class cabinet and sharing it with my Discord. But just know that this is my goal whenever I go multi-tool hunting. So let's dive in. I made a nice little makeshift system for us to use. It's only a three-planet system to keep things simple. Just know that everything we're talking about apply only to systems with two and three-star economies. This is very important. Make sure to avoid outlaw, abandoned, and one-star systems if you feel like heading out on a multi-tool hunt for an S-Class tool. But just to reiterate, if class is not important to you, feel free to throw one-star economies into the mix as well. Just know there's 0% chance of finding an S-Class multi-tool there. We're going to start with a few overarching concepts that need to be understood. If you can keep these things in mind, chances are pretty good that you'll be able to answer your own questions about multi-tool spawn pools. The first concept is pretty simple, but very important to keep in mind because it seems to trip up a lot of people. Multi-tool cabinets have a fixed class that they assign to whatever multi-tool is in it. To put it another way, if you find a C-class cabinet and change spawn pools, whatever new tool is in the cabinet will be a C-class tool. This concept is the heart and soul of multi-tool hunting. So once you eventually find an S-class tool in a cabinet, this cabinet will always contain an S-class tool, regardless of the pool you're in. So just to make sure this sinks in, you can think about the cabinets having a fixed class, and the multi-tools are the things that change depending on the active pool. If you can wrap your head around this one, then you'll be way ahead of most who struggle to understand how spawn pools work. The next concept is somewhat of a 2A and 2B. 2A would be that every multi-tool has a default class that can change depending on the cabinet it occupies. Makes sense, right? since multi-tools are the things that change, not the cabinet class, thus having a native class. 2B would be that a multi-tool can only move up or down a class from its default or native class. Now, if you're wondering how do we know what the native class of a tool is, well, put a pin in that because all will be revealed shortly. You with me so far? Hopefully I haven't lost anyone. These will sink in when we get to some examples. The next concept is that every planet usually has a pool of four different tools. These are unique to the planet and will not be found in any other planet's pool. One of the four will serve as, uh, what do I call it? Kind of a, not really a sacrifice, but more of a... I volunteer as tribute! Yes, tribute, perfect. Thanks, Katniss. So each planet will offer up one tool to be its tribute. The tool it sends will generally be a tool in its native class, meaning that it has not jumped up or down a class, that it's in its native or default class. So to circle back to that earlier question of knowing if a tool is in its native class, well, as we just talked about, 
We'll assume the tool a planet sends will be in its native class, unless proven otherwise. Don't worry, I'll go through an example of this so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So let's just operate on the assumption that the tool that each planet sends is in its native class. Lastly, in order to change spawn pools, you just need to land, hop out, and reload that autosave. When you return from the save, you will now be in that planet's pool. Super easy. Okay, those were the concepts you need to file away. Don't worry, we'll for sure revisit these as I go through my example. So, we're in the galaxy Targaryen. Hmm, sounds oddly familiar. It has three planets. When it comes to pools, like I mentioned earlier, every planet or moon has its own pool, with only one being active at any given time. In addition to these pools, when you first enter a system, you'll actually be in the space station or default system pool. So the big takeaway? You count the number of bodies in the system, and then you add one for the space station and you have your total possible pools in that system. So here, we'll have four different pools to work with. As a rule, I like systems with at least four or five to maximize my chances of a cool discovery. Obviously, the best case scenario is hunting a tool in a six-planet system. Keep in mind when I say planet, I'm referring to planetary bodies, which include moons. So, for example, this system has four planets and two moons. I would just refer to that system as a six-planet system, for the sake of simplicity. Put the torches away. I understand most moons aren't planets unless they orbit the sun, have gravity strong enough to make it spherical, as well as a strong gravitational pull to clear its orbit of debris. The last thing I want to do is piss off Neil deGrasse Tyson, trust me. So why didn't I flinch? Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of- When entering an occupied system, the first thing to do is find a cabinet that's relatively centrally located in the system and easy to find. Yep, we're heading to the space station to check out its multi-tool cabinet. So let's back up just a bit and take more of a macro look at this process. So we just arrived in the system, so by default, we'll be in the space station pool. Going back to the core concepts of how spawn pools work, we know that each planet has one tool it will send to represent its pool in any given multi-tool cabinet. And since planetary pools are made up of a variety of classes, it's prepared in any situation to send the tool that only needs to stay the same, go up or go down one class. For instance, if you have an A-class cabinet, you know a planet can't send a native C tool because the native C would have to jump up two classes to get to A, and that violates one of the core concepts. So to summarize, a planet's pool will have all the bases covered because it'll have a mix of native classes. And since we also know that a tool's class can only move up or down a class, we're not interested in a space station cabinet that has a B or C class, because a native B or C tool would be unable to make that jump to S. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. With all that being said, our hope is for the space station cabinet to be an A class. Obviously, we'd be totally fine with an S class, but anyone who's looked at space station cabinets for any length of time knows there's a very low chance of this happening. It's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely. Because this is such an easy cabinet to find, and it's generally located at a central position in relation to the other planets, it makes the ideal cabinet to use for our test cabinet. Because there are, what, 18 quintillion planets? If I don't find an A or S cabinet in the space station, I'll just move on. But if you're feeling extra adventurous, you can certainly look for the A-class cabinet on one of the planets in the system. This would be the same concept as finding an A at the space station. Except you'd be returning to this cabinet instead of the space station's cabinet to check what every planet sends. The only thing you're going to want to do is to make sure and do your search for a minor settlement on a planet that's as central to the other planets as possible. And just to quickly bring the newer players up to speed, minor settlements are the inhabited outposts which have landing pads. They'll have a couple NPCs inside as well as a nanite machine, a trade terminal, and most importantly, a multi-tool cabinet. Minor settlements are the heart of multi-tool hunting, and we'll be using them extensively in Phase 3. But you don't always get to Phase 3. Unfortunately, in many cases, you won't even get to Phase 2. So let's go over Phase 1 to understand why that would be. 
Phase one is checking the space station cabinet class. If it's not an A or an S, my usual reaction, like I said earlier, is to just move on to another system. So we didn't even get to phase two in this case. But say the cabinet was an A class. Nice. Now we can start phase two. Phase two is relatively simple. We're going to reload on every planet to activate that particular planetary pool and then check the space station cabinet to see what that planet's pool sends as its tribute. Remember, we're operating under the assumption that a tribute is in its native class. So when we see that tool in the A-class cabinet, we know it's possible for it to move up one into an S. So we'll check out Stark Omega first. We'll reload and travel back to the station. Nope, next planet. We head to Lannister Prime and reload and go check the cabinet. No, definitely not. Okay, our third and final planet. We go to Baratheon 51L1 next. We'll reload and travel back to the station to check out the cabinet. Ugh, not good. If that tool could talk. I'm fun, I'm exciting, and I'm different. I'll agree with the third. So unfortunately, if our heart is set on getting an alien or experimental S-class tool, this system will not be capable of producing it. The cold hard truth is that this outcome is pretty common. But let's rewind and change the outcome of getting something we did want in an A-class cabinet. Now we can move on to phase three. Phase three is looking for an S-class cabinet in the system. Every planet has one, so it won't matter which planet we find it on. So say we reloaded on Stark Omega and we check the space station to find a really cool alien rifle. Since this spawned into the cabinet, we know this tool's native class is most likely an A. And since it can only move up a class, if we were to find the S-class cabinet while we're in the Stark Omega pool, the cabinet will have this tool as an S-class. And that's essentially the bare bones method for checking what the tribute tool for each planet is, as well as how to get it in an S-class. The next portion I'll touch on are some tips to make the hunt easier. First off, let's go back to the situation where you checked the space station cabinet while in the default pool and saw it was just a B-class. That's a bummer because you're currently in a six-planet system. Well, the good news is you can still go on your hunt in this system, but you're going to have to find the A-class cabinet. And then once you find the A-class cabinet, if you liked any of those multi-tools, you're going to have to then go on an S-class cabinet hunt. Remember, the overall goal is to get a certain tool as an S-class. The good news is the A-class hunt will be a lot easier than the S. But hey, if you have a ton of extra nanites laying around, you can get a lower class and then just buy your way up. So let's continue in this scenario where you're looking for a cabinet. This will be the same whether you're looking for the A or the S cabinet. As I mentioned earlier, we'll rely on minor settlements for phase three. To find minor settlements, you will need some nav data. This is the currency that the space station map vendor needs in order to give you maps to inhabited outposts or other maps. You'll definitely want some nav data to start with. You can accumulate quite a bit along the way. And actually, when you're inside these minor settlements, check the terminal. In many cases, you can actually just flat out buy nav data. To make things easier, I would advise having at least like 20 maps to inhabited outposts to avoid having to return to the space station right away. But you can certainly get started with as few as six to 10. We'll be accumulating quite a bit of nav data, so you'll have plenty to use for future maps when you run out. For instance, at these settlements, you're gonna wanna visit these little containment areas because you'll get at least one out of these. There'll also be a little save area where once you do so, it rewards you with nav data. And finally, inside the minor settlement, there's usually a couple. So as you can see, you're gonna accumulate nav data pretty quickly. Basically, the more maps you have starting out, the more efficient your hunt will be in the early stage of phase three. Finding an inhabited outpost is pretty easy, but there are some things to keep in mind. This map, once activated, will show you the location of six different types of outposts. These are observatories, trading posts, transmission towers, shelters, colossal archives, and of course, minor settlements. An effective way to start out is to find all six outposts. A helpful game mechanic of these maps is that they'll only show you one variety of outpost at any given time. 
So once you visit a specific kind of outpost, the map will then be able to show you another one of that particular kind. If this sounds confusing, the takeaway is that once you've activated and located all six types of outposts, only visit the minor settlements, leave everything else undiscovered. From then on, since the others have not been visited, they will not trigger any future maps. So once you visited your minor settlement, that will be the only type of outpost the map is able to lead you to, making things super simple. Hopefully this makes sense to you. If there's two words that capture phase three the best, it would be rinse, repeat. You're gonna activate a map to show a minor settlement. Land, check the cabinet, usually find it's not the class you want, so you'll activate another map to discover another minor settlement, land, check the cabinet, so on and so forth. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. Your search is over once you found the S-class cabinet. But just to finish this scenario of seeing a B-class cabinet in the space station, for instance, but you want to look for the A-class cabinet, this phase will end once you've located your A-class cabinet. At this point, this is the same as finding an A-class cabinet at the space station right away. The only difference is, you'll have to save and reload on every planet, and then fly back to this cabinet to check to see what tool was sent from the neighboring planets. Make sure to drop a save beacon so this is easy to do. So if you do find a cool tool, you'll now have the S-class cabinet to look for, which is the same process as what you use to find the A. You might get lucky and actually stumble upon the S-class while you're looking for the A. Oh man, this is always an awesome find. It just cuts out a ton of searching. But trust me, the odds are very low of this happening. Okay, how are we doing? Is your brain smoking yet? I truly hope all of this is making sense because I do have a few more pieces of info to improve the efficiency of your hunt. The first tidbit applies to the situation where you're looking for the A-class cabinet. Remember, this is needed if you're in a system you don't want to give up on, even if the space station cabinet was less than an A-class. If you remember earlier, I said that you should have your test cabinet that's the cabinet you'll check after reloading on every planet, on a planet that's as central to the others as possible. To actively choose what planet this is, make sure and not fire off any of your maps until you've entered the atmosphere of the planet you want your test cabinet on. If you're in the space station or just flying around in space, the chosen planet where all six discoveries are made will be picked at random. We don't want that. So once you're inside any planet's atmosphere and you activate a map which reveals a location, that location will be on the planet you're in. This is true the vast majority of the time and also works with the other types of maps which reveal the location of specific buildings or structures. So try to pick a central planet for your cabinet so you don't find yourself having to pulse from one end of the system to the other just to do a check. One thing I do want to mention is that if you just arrived into the system, and you find that the space station cabinet is less than an A, but you still want to go look for the A and find it, remember, you're still in the default spawn pool at this point. Since getting into the system, you have not reloaded on any planets yet, so while you're here, make sure and reload and check that cabinet again. You'll see that the tool has changed. And your final tip to cut a little time off your search is that once you've located and checked a cabinet at a minor settlement, don't fire off your next map until you're back in your ship. If you're outside your ship, you get this somewhat long-winded, annoying animation. When in your ship, this animation is short and sweet. Now, <laughs> if this seems trivial to you, then come back to me after you've checked your 75th cabinet. So as promised, let's take a look at a few questions that came up after I released my first multi-tool video to see if this one helps out. Okay, so Steve asks, if I find a multi-tool that I love at the station, but I don't like the class, do I reload at the station and then I basically just have to find minor settlements on the planets that spawn that particular tool and the class I want? There is no way to force the specific tool, right? Well, I'll answer the second one first and correct, there is no way to force a specific tool into a cabinet, other than what we're doing here, of course. You just have to accept whatever the planet sends as its representative to go to the A or S class cabinet. So if you found the multi-tool that you love at the station, you'll want to stay in that pool, yeah? So if you're currently in one of the planet's pools, what do you think happens if you reload on the space station? If you said you would then switch the pool to the default or space station pool, you'd be correct. So if it was in a planetary pool, 
you're going to be in the wrong pool. But obviously, if this were in the default pool already, the pool wouldn't change, so it really wouldn't matter. You don't need to reload anymore. Remember, you only reload when you want to switch pools. So depending on whatever pool you're in, whether it be a planet's or the default, do not reload because it's the right pool to be in because you like the tool. So if you see this tool at a C-class cabinet in the station, the best case scenario is that you can look for the B-class cabinet. Remember, going back to our main concepts, a tool can only move up or down one class from its native class. Next up, we have Zemonium. They ask, how can I change the multi-tool inside the active pool? Not change the active pool, but the multi-tool inside the active pool. You said that the max of multi-tools inside a pool is five. So I should find at least five minor settlements with each having a different multi-tool? Well, I did select this question first off because it is a good question, but I was a little off on a part of my answer. Spawn pools consist of four tools. But let's specifically address the main part of that. We just need to circle back to one of the core concepts. A planet will only send one tool to any one cabinet. So say you're in a pool and you come across 50 C-class cabinets. Every single one of those 50 will be the same tool. There's nothing you can do to make the planet send a different tool to that cabinet. Now, if you found an S-class cabinet, the tool will have to change, right? Because the C-class native tool cannot go all the way up to an S. So in that case, the planet would need to send a different tool. Okay, our final question comes from Shinaldo. They want an explanation as to why they didn't find a specific tool they tried to get from the No Man's Sky coordinate exchange. Well, these are notoriously flaky after updates. So if you see a No Man's Sky coordinate exchange post and it's a couple years old, you can pretty much bet that things have changed. You might get lucky, it's not a given, but yeah, that's gonna happen after updates. The second part of that is, will the multi-tool cabinet eventually respawn a new tool or is it empty forever? Well, I would just say, anytime you go multi-tool hunting, always make sure to have your multiplayer turned off. That's a super easy way to make sure the tool that you expect to be there will be there. But to my knowledge, yes, they do eventually spawn back in, but I'm not sure the timetable on that. Whew, so this video is pretty long, so I'm going to stop it there. I really hope this one successfully answers many questions you previously had. The next time you have a question about the process, just make sure and revisit the core concepts of spawn pools, and odds are you will find your answer. Thanks so much for watching. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming. Have an S-Class day, everybody.